Hi, I'm Luke Stock. I'm a Senior Director of Solution Engineering here at Sigma. And I'm Reed Rawlings, a Sales Engineer here at Sigma Computing. Today, I think, Reed, we're going to talk about Looker Data Studio. No, no. Just Looker. Like Looker, the Looker Data Studio? Completely different things. We've got uh, Looker, which was kind of bought out a couple years ago, and then Looker Data Studio, which is just an old kind of Google product. Oh, OK. Why don't they call it Google Data Studio? Uh, well, they did, and then I think they just wanted to confuse people more, so they renamed it to be similar to this other thing they bought. OK, so today we're talking about Just Looker. Just Looker. OK. What is it about Looker that they say makes it so much uh, better than other BI and analytics platforms? Yeah, so they've kind of got three core principles, access and analyze data. There's delivering trusted data experiences at scale. Uh, and then there's improving productivity and decision making. From there, you're going to be starting at the kind of data warehouse level. Perfect. So we start from our data warehouse. OK, like a Snowflake, Databricks. Sure. Mostly BigQuery now. BigQuery, yeah. because it is Looker. It, yeah, it it's is all Google. under GCP. OK. So from our data warehouse and Looker, there's only one kind of direction you can go. And that's straight into LookML. So that's like uh, SQL? Uh, Kind of. Like uh, Python? No, it's, it's really its own thing. OK. Yeah. Uh, what is it? Well, it's a semantic modeling layer kind of completely based in YAML files. OK. A semantic layer, like a universe in business objects? Yeah, exactly. OK. Or like uh, yeah, any of those semantic layers that were built 30 years ago in like BI tools. Yep. All right. Well, who, who creates this uh, LookML? Uh, pretty much just data engineers. Okay, so if I'm like a 2,000, 5,000 person company, like there's probably two people, three yep. people that might be able to do that work down there. Exactly. All right. So what do I, what do I, what do I create? Well, you're going to be creating um, what are called view files, typically to start, and those kind of represent the tables that live in your warehouse. The first thing here is going to be your view file. Okay. What is that? It's really a representation of a table. So it'll start off with the table name. It'll list out all of the columns and then any kind of permutations of those columns you might want to create. OK. So like one table? Uh, yeah. Well, one table is one view. OK. So for every table that I want to represent in my warehouse, I have to create a view file for that table. Exactly. At least one. OK. Then from there, you're also going to have and explore, which defines the relationships between these view files that you've just created. OK. And then there's kind of a last component here called a persisted derived table, which kind of handles the more complex stuff that might not be initially represented in your views, you know, subselects, uh, multi-level joins, aggregations of aggregations, window functions. Those really need to end up in their own kind of file type. OK. Interesting. From there, we can get going and actually starting to like access and analyze data for people? Yeah, sure. Really, it's all going to be through this Explore environment, though. What that's going to create is the Explore itself. We'll have one of our business users kind of accessing these view files that you've created for them. So is that somebody, like, somebody that uses a spreadsheet? It's really more of a, a data analyst. And we can talk about the construction of this here. You're going to have all of the kind of fields and views on the left side here. You'll have the table that you're interacting with, and then the viz from that table. OK, so this will be like the row level detail of a table in my warehouse. No, no. So you really kind of need to understand SQL um, because everything is based off these view files here. Looker does this thing where as you're pulling in fields from the left-hand side here, it's always adding a group by clause. So you're really just getting aggregated data. OK, but what if I would need to get to the row level detail? Uh, you need to bring in the exact kind of like order ID or row level detail column that you want to see for the row wise data in the table. OK, so this Explorer doesn't really feel anything like a spreadsheet um, that most people are using today. No, because you're always going to be getting that aggregated data. OK, all right. So. I'm an analyst, and I created something amazing, and I show it to my boss. Mm. Um, what, if, what if something's missing, or he has a new question that wasn't preconceived? Um, what, what do I do as an analyst? Well, there's a, a limited option called table calculations. 
This is kind of another net new language that your users are gonna have to learn on top of LookML. Mm -hmm. You can answer some simple questions there, but there really is kind of a laundry list of limitations that you need to keep in mind uh, before really using these kind of in your full production or any kind of dashboards that you'd have to hand out. So what's a good example of something I could answer with a table calculation? Um, really just kind of like simple division, really simple calculations um, that you'd wanna do maybe one offs of. Okay. Um, what if it was like more complicated, like I want to do some sort of period over period um, calculation. I want to look at the same week sales from last year. Oftentimes that's where these PDTs come into play. Okay, can't do that through a table calculation typically? If you really, really, truly understood how they worked and had the exact data modeled for you in the view, maybe you could, but it's not likely your average user would be able to. Okay, so where do I go if I get stuck? I'm trying to get some mount tomorrow to my boss. Well, you're probably gonna have to go back to the modern layer, and if you don't understand that, then you're gonna need to rely on these two. All right, how does that typically work in an enterprise? Often, that means sending in a ticket, and your ticket's probably not the first one, so it's gonna go into a queue that these two can start tackling, you know, once they get some spare time. Okay. What are they typically doing to um, block these end users? Well, they're just writing more look them out. Okay. So going back to existing views or augmenting the PDT. Yep, exactly. Maybe creating a new PDT, augmenting an old one, updating a view that might be in a, a bunch of different explorers. Okay. And if there's like, you know, 50 explorers that people are already using, on a daily basis, um, I imagine there has to be some process to, like, so that they're not making changes to production. They have to test it out in some way. Yeah, so they're always gonna be going into a dev environment to test out whatever they've done. I can imagine that that process, it doesn't take a day usually, right? No, definitely more than that. What's, what does it usually take if they have to go make changes, test changes, make sure that it doesn't regress other explorers or break them? Couple days, a week probably. A week at least, okay. Um, and so if I'm a frustrated end user and I don't have time to wait for a week and I know I've tried to go through this process before, what do they typically do to get past that? Well, you're just gonna skip all this and you're gonna kinda download this data into Excel because you already know how to use that. And the calculation you're doing, you might be a lot more comfortable with inside of Excel, so you'll just do it there. Okay. So effectively, uh, Looker is becoming some sort of convoluted ETL process to end users. Yep, just to get it back, that data back into Excel. Crazy. All right, well, let's go and revisit um, what we talked about earlier, the statements that Looker makes. First and foremost, I, I can't see at all how this would improve productivity and decision making. If anything, it's preventing it mostly. Yeah, slowing it down at the very least. Because there's a bottleneck in these two people or three people that have to make changes to code in order to enable you know hundreds or more uh, people that are trying to get answers to to questions of data correct i suppose that the end users do trust the data that they have access to so i i think it's probably a checkbox there because they have a nice semantic layer would you say that yeah it's trustable but you know the scale piece i just can't understand That's how where things possibly scale really break down okay I guess I didn't ask this question. What about if it's like billions of rows of data in here? What is What are the implications on that? Uh, well, you really better keep aggregating that data if you actually want to work with it in this Excel environment. That's the only way the end users are going to be able to get to it. Um, otherwise, you know, you just need to get back in the queue and wait your turn. Gotcha. In order to access and analyze, I mean, it doesn't feel like it's, um, you know, giving them, you know, fast access to data when you're dependent upon a couple people to even just see some simple views or tables that are sticking here in the warehouse. Correct. Okay. So what would this look like if we were using Sigma? Well, I think the first thing we can do is just get rid of this entire section here. We don't have a four semantic layer that users have to go through just to get you know basic access to tables in the warehouse. And that means we don't need to rely on these data engineers either. Okay, fantastic. So for us, it's really going directly from the warehouse to kind of our spreadsheet. Okay. So. There is no such thing as an explore um, default or starting point in Sigma to the end user. Nope, you just go directly from the tables you have access to into a workbook, get started on the spreadsheet itself. Okay, so I suppose we can erase the kind of explore concept because that doesn't exist. And, um, you know, table calculations? 
Yeah, we don't need to worry about those. Our calculations are based off Excel and Google Sheets. We want to allow those users who are coming in to leverage what they already know. Okay. And because Sigma looks and feels like a spreadsheet when you're using it, I suppose um, the end users typically don't feel a need to export to Excel. Exactly. Again, they're leveraging those, cal or those kind of field knowledge they already have from Excel directly in our spreadsheet. Okay. And because there's no look ML layer, um, you're usually not going to get stuck answering some simple questions that might have been blocked because you're effectively, you know, closer to the data. Right. Yep. You don't have to worry about getting into this queue just to answer some simple questions. So really, you can bring our end user a little bit closer to the data itself. Seems like a lot bit closer. Oh yeah. Awesome. So it seems like too good to be true. You know, Sigma is a browser spreadsheet-like interface can access the data directly uh, in Snowflake or BigQuery. You can see it at a row level, mm -hmm. so you can kind of trust the data better. It doesn't automatically group it when you start to access and analyze it. Um, what are What is like one of the gotchas with Sigma, though? It can't be that simple. Well, I, I do think that people always have a use case for some sort of semantic layer, or a bit of data modeling. So while we don't require it, we do offer kind of a, a data model approach where you can still have that governance on top of data that lives inside of your warehouse and then pass these data models back to your end users. Gotcha. And that data models, is that a proprietary code that people are learning? Nope, you're really just kind of using either the SQL knowledge you have, or if it's more from Excel, you can use things like lookups to pull data from one table to the next. Awesome. Wow, Reed, um, this has been really interesting learning about Looker and not Looker Data Studio. Maybe we'll talk about that in a different uh, Lightboard session. Yeah, and I've had a great time uh, working with you today. Thanks yeah. for uh, helping me understand it. Yeah, absolutely.